So what's new and what's emerging? The new thing is a new type of MRI. This is a diagnostic type of an MRI and it's called multiparametric MRI. Um, why is it called multiparametric? Because we take a bunch of different kinds of pictures of your prostate gland using the MRI. It would be the equivalent of taking black and white pictures for your family album, then color pictures, and then having video. Okay? So we have a bunch of different ways now that we can use MRI to look at the prostate gland. And we put those all together in one study called a multiparametric MRI. So there's some fancy names for these things that aren't important to you, T2 weighted, T1 weighted. These are kind of anatomic imaging. There's something called diffusion weighted imaging that actually um, Albert Einstein came up with some of the basic science for this in his miracle year when he came up with the photoelectric effect, special relativity, general relativity. At the same time, he helped to describe this random motion of water molecules. It's called Brownian motion. Well, that random jiggling of water molecules is restricted when cancer grows in a tissue. And it turns out we can actually measure the diffusion of water in tissues using MRI without even sticking a needle in you. Okay? So that's a new thing. That's called diffusion weighted imaging. It's a very important part of this new type of MRI. Then we also do something called dynamic contrast enhanced imaging. That's where we start an IV, we give some contrast very, very quickly just like what women get when they have a breast MRI, or if you've ever had a CAT scan, when you got some iodinated dye or contrast through your arm that made you feel kind of warm, it's a similar kind of contrast. We take those pictures very, very quickly. We get like between 1,000 and 2,000 images in just a few minutes, and we send those to a fancy computer workstation to do post-processing. Now, some of you that have read about MRI for the prostate gland may have heard of something called an endorectal coil. This is a coil that's inserted into the rectum and we inflate a balloon up to about 100 cc's. And there are many sites that use these, but um, in the last three and a half years we've kind of gotten away from using them because they're uncomfortable, first of all. And also I'm a firm believer that the best test to pick up prostate cancer is the one the patient will actually undergo. There are many men for religious, racial, ethnic reasons, whatever, are not going to allow a 100 cc balloon to be inserted in their rectum. So there's a subset of men that we just won't reach with MRI because of that endorectal coil. So that's one of the reasons we've gotten away from it, is patient comfort and acceptance of this test. The other reason is that for detection, for finding prostate cancer, it turns out it's not needed. There are some places where it is helpful. One is doing MR spectroscopy, and we're not going to talk about that so much. That's kind of a research tool for looking for prostate cancer. It's not what I would consider to be the standard of care in a community setting. And then it can also be helpful for looking for local spread of prostate cancer. That's a different question. That's called staging. Tonight we're talking about detection and localization of prostate cancer, and you don't really need the endorectal coil. So what does prostate cancer look like with all these fancy new ways we have of taking its picture? Well, on the T2-weighted images, it's dark, very, very dark. On the diffusion-weighted imaging, it's dark on something we call an ADC map image, and it's bright on the diffusion-weighted image. And I'll show you some examples of this. On the contrast-enhanced imaging, the dynamic contrast-enhanced imaging, these tumors enhance very, very quickly, and they wash out very quickly. And the reason for that is tumors are smart. They build new blood vessels to supply them with oxygen and nutrients. That's called neovascularity, new blood vessels. Almost every tumor makes its own blood vessels to supply itself with food and with oxygen. Well, that contrast finds these new blood vessels and allows us to see all of this new blood supply that's supplying the tumor to help find it. I mentioned that we get about 2,000 images when we do one of these fancy new types of MRIs. We send it to a workstation that's called DynaCAD. The CAD stands for Computer Assisted Diagnosis or Computer Assisted Detection. Okay, so it helps to sort through all of these images and help us find what we call a tumor suspicious region, an area that could be a prostate cancer. And this is what the GUI, the graphic user interface, or the, the monitor looks like when we're looking at one of these. We have color overlay images that show us the contrast enhanced images. We have diffusion weighted imaging. And we can lay these all out with what we call a hanging protocol. So it makes it easy for me to interpret 
this type of study. But a program that has prostate MRI that it's building and, and, and uh, establishing in the community needs to have one of these computer type setups um, to interpret these. Now here's what a cancer looks like. Um, your prostate gland, if it's normal, is about the size of a lemon or a lime. If it's enlarged due to benign disease, it could be you know, as big as a grapefruit or a big Nerf ball. Okay? So here's a, a prostate gland shown here in axial or transverse plane. So this is slices through your pelvis like slices through a loaf of bread. Okay? And on the T2-weighted image, this dark thing in the front of the prostate gland, that's what prostate cancer tends to look like. It's dark on the T2-weighted image. On the ADC map image, that diffusion-weighted image, it's dark. On the other part of the diffusion-weighted image, it shows up bright. With the contrast enhanced imaging, we get these nice color overlay images. And we can set this up any way we want. We choose to have red be bad, OK? So again, it's kind of light bulb medicine. I look on here, and the red areas are where this tumor is making new blood vessels, neovascularity. It enhances really quickly, and the contrast or dye washes out really quickly. So here's that tumor suspicious region sitting way up here in the front. This is all the same patient. So it's dark on the T2. The diffusion's restricted on the diffusion, and it's got a rapid washout pattern. So what are the indications in 2012 for this new type of MRI? It's a patient who's got an elevated serum PSA that has a negative transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy, a patient that's got an abnormal digital rectal exam with a negative transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy, the patient who has a positive transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy um, to look for local staging, so that's local spread, and also to make sure that there's not higher Gleason score tumor that's been missed, right? Remember, 35 to 45% of the time, the transrectal ultrasound-guided biopsy undergrades or under Gleason scores the tumor. And then finally, another indication is a patient who has prostate cancer that's been treated. They had a radical prostatectomy or they had radiation, and their PSA went to like zero. And then a few years later, you may have heard of patients like this, their PSA slowly starts creeping up, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Now when that happens, we know that patient has recurrent prostate cancer. That's called biochemical recurrence. The lab test tells us the cancer's back. We just don't know where it is. Did it recur at the site of the prostate gland originally? Is it a distant metastasis? Is it in the bone somewhere or in a lymph node somewhere? We don't know. But you can do this test and look at the prostate area and see whether or not there's signs of a recurrent tumor that's grown back. So in the European literature, they're about three years ahead of us here in the United States with regard to using MRI for detection of prostate cancer and for doing MRI-guided biopsies. This is from uh, European Urology. This is the main urology medical journal in Europe. And uh, this is kind of a review paper that talks about advances in magnetic resonance imaging. This is from about a year and a half ago. And they point out in this paper that published data underlined an emerging role for this new type of MRI as the most sensitive and specific tool available for imaging prostate cancer. Okay, so Europeans are a little bit ahead of us on this, starting to emerge here in the urology literature here in the United States. But among the tests we can use to image or look for prostate cancer, this is clearly the best. So part one of this you know, syzygy of these three things lining up is that this new type of MRI is good for detecting prostate cancer, for finding tumor suspicious regions. Once we see a tumor suspicious region, how do we biopsy it? That's part two, the MRI-guided biopsy of the prostate gland.